Coming up, we lift heavy stuff. It's the slowest crane in the history of the cranes. An innocent bag takes a kick. <laughs> and Project Chicago gets its drivetrain back. Come on, Alpina. Move! Aloha and welcome to part 5 of Project Chicago, the formerly cheap Alpina B7. In the previous episode, we fully rebuilt this engine from a bare block up to the valve covers. And now we're going to pick up where we left off and start reinstalling the rest of the parts. We need to bolt back the transmission, the cats, million other things. And then all of this goes back into the car. There's actually a ton of work that we need to do here. So let's start and hopefully by the end of this episode, we're going to hear this engine running for the very first time. We're going to kick off with vano solenoids, which we need to prep first. I already cleaned up these two, replaced the O-rings. And now we're going to do the same with this pair here. First, we're going to remove the O-rings. You can also activate it to hear how it clicks. Works fine, so we're gonna rinse it out with brake clean and compress there. Clicks and activates nicely. Lube it up and get the new o ring. Nice, then the big one. Fogging well for men. And that one is done. All right, that's ready. Lube up the inside. And it's slowly pushes it in. There are these plugs on the back of the head and I noticed that this one is leaking so we're going to replace the washer. New washer going in. We're also going to replace the coolant drain plug gasket that's on the side of the block. New gasket. The one on the other side as well. Now these two coolant nipples. Boy, those were loose. New nipple with a washer. There's some bracketry on the back of the head that we need to reattach. This is the secondary air pipe that I just cleaned and replaced this O-ring. And these passages here, the machine shop cleaned that when they refurbished the head. And if you're asking yourself, how do I remember where what goes? I don't, but my phone does. Took 15 million pictures of everything. Then the hook for lifting the engine. So I'm gonna cover up this hole here because the pump is going to be reinstalled once the engine is back in the car. Now the front lifting point. Now we have the old dip. <laughs> Gotta clean it up and refresh all of the O-rings. Fog it up. Lube it up. Secondary air pipe. Ooh. There you go. We have a gasket here for the eccentric shaft sensor. Here's a brand new one. The camshaft position sensors, we're gonna install once the engine is back in the car. I don't wanna risk breaking them when we start putting this thing in. So for now, I'm just gonna close up the holes. Now we're gonna install the base plate for the Valtronic motor. Now the pressure regulating valve. That doesn't look too bad, but I have a brand new one. This is cheap enough to replace. 
So the spring goes in. Copy paste on the other side. While we have nice and easy access, we're gonna install a brand new water pump. So silicon spray. And then good and tight for this one. So we have a cap here. Then we have a brand new temperature sensor here. The pulley, thermostat, and the vacuum pump we're gonna install once the engine is back in the car. Same goes for the intake manifold. We have engine mounting arm, alternator bracket, and this is now ugly metal, and you know what that means. Time to make it look better than brand new. Step into my Vixen surface treatment vapor blasting cabinet. Oh man. Clean surface, new seal. No torque spec here, so we're going with good and tight. Another bracket here for the AC compressor. And with that, it's time to remove the engine from the stand. All right, so I'm gonna go get my apple picker. We have arrived. Oh my God, I'm so bored, come on. Schnella! Mm. I think we have a lift off. <laughs> Whoopsie. So now you're gonna carefully Dump it somewhere. Thinking somewhere around here, I can still work on it. Operation Bounce the Turkey is a go. <laughs> Bounce. Bow wow. Very good. Next up, the rear main seal. Clean time. As instructed in the repair manual, we're gonna add RTV to the corners. The repair manual says to lightly coat the crankshaft with oil. So we are not removing the support bushing. 
That's how we're going to install the seal properly. We have bolts on the bottom. Now I'm going to replace this plug here. There's an O-ring there. Oil. Here's a new plug with an O-ring. Brand new coolant cover and the gasket is bonded to it, so you have to replace the whole thing. That's the rear of the engine done. Now we're gonna dump some fresh oil in the engine. I wanna turn it over by hand and just get the oil flowing. And when it comes to oil, we're not gonna use any special braking oil. I've talked to a few people about this and especially the guy that's leave the block told me not to mess around and just use whatever factor recommended. Because if we use mineral oil or something really thin, it can actually produce more wear than we want. In this case, 5W40 fully synthetic is what this engine uses. You can also use 5W30 or 030 or 040, depending on the climate, but given the bearing clearance that we have here, we're gonna go with 5W40. And this is also going to be a good test, whether it's gonna hold oil or not. It smells nice. Spark plugs are out, Let's spin it. All right, that's good. So you can see the oil is definitely flowing because it's coming out uh, and going to the oil cooler. Excellent, made a mess. And now we're gonna install the flywheel or the flex plate, whatever. The repair manual calls it flywheel, but I think it's the flex plate. There's a pin on the crank that we need to line up. And on these bolts, we're gonna use medium thread locker. The crank is locked in the front and the torque for these bolts is 105 newton meters. This is the transmission and behind the torque converter we have a seal that I want to try and replace. So now we're going to pull it out and it requires special tools which I don't have so let's see if it's doable. Oh, that's good. It was. Freshly serviced, by the way, I have records. This is the seal that I want to replace and they can leak due to age and I don't want any leaks on this car. So let me see if we can remove that and then tap in the new one somehow. So let me try with this thing real quickly, but I don't think. Oh, it's coming out. can be that easy. Okay, it's that easy. Just this stupid tool which I had for three or four years, never used it up until now. Never throw away tools. The repair manual says to lightly oil the ceiling surface. New one going in. Use the old seal to try and start it. Because again, there's a special tool to drive it in, which naturally I don't have. And that's sitting perfectly flush all around. Now we're gonna put back the torque converter and it's very important to line up these tabs here. Oh, my hands can go in there. There it is. Oh, there it is. Needs to click twice. Now what I would love to do here is put this entire transmission into the vaping blasting cabinet and make it look brand new. Unfortunately, that's not possible, so we're gonna start scrubbing. <sighs> well, it looks tiny bit better. I mean, that's not great, but it's cleaner. All right, the next step is to bolt back the transmission. Currently, it's a lot higher than it needs to be. Ouch! Ooh, there goes my finger. Oh, that's a good one. Stitched myself up 
And now we can proceed. Can't feel my finger though, but. Oh yeah. Is this still too high? No, it's too high. Mating time. Okay. There it is. All right, so now we need to bolt the torque converter to the flywheel. There are four bolts that secure the torque converter to the flex plate. All right, that's all four of them tight. And we're gonna do the final torque once all of this is back in the car. There's an access hatch underneath through the upper oil pan so we can torque all of those bolts. All right, now the starter. Now we're going to do the positive cable. The old one was mangled by the previous mechanic. So this is the used one in good condition. Goes like that. Nope. Finally figured out how the cable goes back in. That took way longer than it should have. Now the little heat shield. Now we're going to install this connection here for the old cooler. We have brand new O-rings here. And now the dogalytic converters, new gaskets, and this bulge here goes towards the exhaust manifold. Dog number one going in. And that's the dogs installed. Now we're gonna do the O2 sensors. These are actually very difficult to replace once the engine is in the car. No, oh, this one is. <clears throat> Here are the new ones, original Bosch units. It comes with anti-seize on the threads. Now I can start putting back the engine harness. All right, so let's see if we can run this cable here. So I connected the starter cable there. So I know that this one goes there. All right, oh, this is gonna go like that. And with that, this massive drivetrain is ready to go back in. So now we're gonna focus on the car itself. The engine bay is not looking very good, so we gotta make it look nicer. Time to get that third in. <laughs> Come on, Alpina. Move, you bastard. <laughs> so slippery. By the tire. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> it's in. Well, I did forget to move the camera, but... <laughs> The car's in. Now we're going to replace the engine mounts. Like picking up apples. So the right one is not too bad, but the left one is shot. It shouldn't move that much and make that sound. Here's one. Original part and another one. OE part. Only one was available as OE. The other one you, I had to get from the dealer. The time has come.
It's the slowest crane in the history of the cranes. Already bending something. We didn't even start. Place your bets. What's the first thing that I'm going to crush? Again, you're going in a wrong direction. I guess these, these are gonna be the first. Oh yeah. Those are good sounds. All right, so we cleared the first obstacle. This is the action where you have to use your legs, your hands, bit of brain as well, but not necessarily always. Dumb sheer luck is probably the better way to go about this. F me, F me. And I have to position the transmission oil cooler lines because I don't think I can put that in once the engine is fully seated. All right, so let's see how long this is going to take. It's currently 12 and five minutes. Gentle kicks. I think that's progress, but I'm still waiting to crush some lines. Can I just drop it now? Maybe it'll fall into place on its own. Okay, Coco, we have progress. There, now we have the first row seat. Oh. The steering column is in the way. Ooh. This seems like it's working, but I don't know. I keep losing stuff. Where's the pole? You know what? I'm gonna go get some breakfast. And then we're gonna continue. All right. <clears throat> Go clear the steam column. Oh man, this is good. We have some good progress. We cleared the steering column over there and those two power steering lines that go to the steering rack and then everything on that side as well. So now we just need to push it in home and let it sit on the engine mounts. Oh, no, 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 no. What was that? Oh, that was the firewall. <laughs> oh my God, we are nearly there. You know what would be great? If these transmission lines start leaking after I'm done here. So let me, ouch, secure that transmission line. Mission line and then another bolt. Let me go there. How about the AC compressor? Do we do it now? What do we think? I'm thinking, yeah, let's do it now. All right, that's the compressor in. Here we go, final push. Oh, yes. We have a touchdown, ladies and gents. Yes! It's resting on the engine mounts. And the engine is fully seated. And it's 105. So that wasn't too bad, I gotta admit. And that's including breakfast as well. I think it was worse taking it out than it is putting it back in, which is kind of strange, but that's how I feel about it. All right, that is awesome. Now we're gonna go underneath and bolt back the transmission, and then we can come back up front and start bolting up everything else. The alternator, the oil cooler, and I don't know, there's 15 million things that we need to bolt back. All right, you let me know if you see a flying transmission. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> looks good in here. The transmission is pretty much in place. Just need to bolt the cross member here, and then everything up front is well, where it's supposed to be. There is one bolt for the transmission line that I'm not sure how I'm gonna get to now, but figure something out. This is the transmission support or the cross member. And these are the two mounts that we're going to replace. And also that's aluminum. So you know what that means. First, it's gonna have 
around in the vapor blasting cabinet and then we're gonna put it back. These are looking splendid. Now we can mount new mounts. Oil and forder, of course. And this bushing here is in good condition. The support block for the transmission. The transmission needs to go like that. Now take a step back and the transmission should stay in place. Indeed it did. So I'm fighting like crazy to bolt back that transmission line to the upper oil pan and it's proving to be more difficult than putting the whole engine back in. I'm gonna lose the, the other finger as well. The problem is I want every single bolt to go back into its original place. I don't want anything hanging or left missing. That horrible bolt is back in. New O-rings for the transmission line. And now the oil cooler lines, which I thoroughly flushed and cleaned, and also put new O-rings. Don't let's start a bolt. Let's hope that doesn't leak. In no particular order, we're gonna do the alternator now. And I didn't grab the 13 that I need. Huh, stay there. Oh, I didn't grab the bolt either. That's the positive wire connected. Let's just shove it in and see what happens. Now I'm gonna do up the engine mounts. Now we're gonna install a coolant pipe here. Clean coolant. <coughs> Clean coolant pipe going in. Now we're gonna do the secondary air pumps on the back. Clean pump with a brand new gasket. Brand new pipes. It's got, it has to click. There used to be plastic clips here that disintegrated. So instead we're gonna use zip ties. Brand new knock sensors, OE Bosch. Good and tight. This is the intake manifold, which we are going to clean in a bit. But now we're gonna talk about the fuel injectors. Alpina V7 uses special injectors and they cost over 200 euros each. And given that we are pretty much refreshing everything there, I wanted to make sure that the fuel injectors are good as well. So a nice subscriber named Jurgen got in touch and he works for a company that specializes in cleaning fuel injectors, among other things. This is the name of the company, Hush Auto Teile. And they made me a nice price to clean these injectors. And wow, look at that. Professionally packed and everything. And funnily enough, the injectors were actually not good. The spray pattern was bad. And after testing and cleaning them thoroughly, now they're all within spec and spraying beautifully. So I'm gonna show you a video of that as well. Oh, these are the old O-rings and little filters. I think that's one brand new. Oh my God. That's the old stuff. And that's how that is supposed to look like. A brand new one. So yeah, definitely glad I sent these out for cleaning. Here are the test results before and after. And we had two of them that didn't spray properly. I think I found my go-to place for cleaning fuel injectors. This is a really professional service. Love the packaging. Love all of this stuff. Thank you, Jurgen, very much. Let's clean this puppy. So I'm gonna disassemble it completely. And I also wanna flush these lines. The important thing here is to clean the holes where the fuel injectors will sit. All right, that's now nice and clean. These are now thoroughly flushed as well. Now we're going to start installing fuel injectors and we're going to use a little bit of Vaseline. Normally we would use silicone grease, but silicone grease and fuel system don't mix. And since these are resistant to fuel, Vaseline can't do them any harm. Got to remove the cap. 
and that's all of them installed and they actually have to be installed exactly like this under a certain angle because these fuel injectors they just spray straight the needles are offset so they spray under an angle and when you install the intake manifold like this they're going to spray straight onto the valves but it's not like you can make a mistake because connectors are going to tell you where they need to be placed anyway gently push them in Now the clips, that's the fuel rails installed. Brand new gasket. Little bit of paper to hold the mushiga net. Brand new OE camshaft position sensor. And here you can only use original sensors or OE, otherwise you can have issues. OE stands for original equipment and this is the manufacturer that makes these sensors for BMW. So this is from Vemo and it's exactly the same sensor you would get from the dealer. Only OE, it's half the price and BMW logo is scraped off, but otherwise exactly the same. So that is a good tip to save money and still use genuine parts. So now I'm going to start plugging in the wiring harness, which is actually not as bad as it seems because everything has its perfect length and place where it goes. You can't really mix anything up, Ooh, but you can't drop stuff. Let's suppose the cable connected connectors on the back that we can plug in, you know, the main box. And again, this is not as bad as it looks. Everything has its own place here. Colors as well, unique connectors. You can't mix anything up. Negative cable here. And this is the loom for the ignition wires. It uh, goes underneath and it clips into place. Always clean the connections. And that's everything in the box plugged in. Put that loosely over there for now. It's the same deal with camshaft position sensors. One wire is longer than the other, so you can't mix it up. Valtronic motor number one going in. Nice, good and tight. All right, so I think I'm gonna plug back the compressor line. Brand new O-ring. And now a brand new thermostat. The original thermostat for this Alpina and N62 engine opens at 105 degrees Celsius which means that this engine is sometimes seen temperatures as high as 110, 115 when it's sitting in traffic. And that's just insanely hot. All of that is because of better emissions, fuel consumption, but in the long run, the engine suffers from running that hot. If you look at all of the older models, the V8s, V12s, M70, whatever, M73, pre-facelift, they all run with 90, 95 degrees Celsius thermostats. So what we have here is a custom thermostat that was a gift from a nice subscriber from Czech Republic. Yaroslav Yarax, and he's an expert on N62 engines. He's done so many of them and he knows them inside and out. And he developed this special thermostat. What we have here is a 90 degree Celsius thermostat. And this is especially important for us because we no longer have alu seal. We have cast iron sleeves now, which don't dissipate heat as well as alu seal. So the engine is gonna benefit hugely from running a bit cooler. With this thermostat, it's gonna run around 93, 95 in traffic maybe, but significantly cooler than with the, with the stock thermostat. Thank you very much Yarax for this nice gift and now let's install it. Of course. New idiotic belt without the tensioner. That's just, it's impossible to install it. The repair manual says to use some sort of special tool to clamp it here, but that's how. Anyway. I bought the tensioner and longer belt, so we're gonna go that route. Brand new AC belt and tensioner. Pull the pin out, make sure the belt is lined up and release the tension. Now the vacuum oil pump thing. All right, to install the vacuum pump, I need to rotate the engine and make sure this groove here is sitting vertically. Otherwise, this thing is just gonna flop around and I'm never gonna be able to install it properly. But when it's sitting vertically, I can just push it in home. Ah, went in on the first try.
Now the bracket that Nick Blockhurst would be proud of. All of this just to hold power steering lines. Water pump pulley going back in. Time for the power steering pump to go back in. Before the intercooler can go back in, we need to replace the radiator. I broke the nipple here when I was removing it. Is there anything holding it? No, not really. All right, I think I'm gonna take this outside and that's clean. Time for the new radiator. And this one is OE premium line bear, but it doesn't have the drain thing there, which is a bummer, but what can you do? See this bracket over here? That's to hold the intercooler and there used to be another one on that side. And I took it off in the video. And the last thing I remember is that I put it on the lift over there. And now I spent, and I'm not kidding, over one hour looking for it, can't find it. I had most of the parts on one pile, but for whatever reason, I can't find that stupid bracket. So I had to order a new one that's gonna come in a few days. In the meantime, I have to proceed and put the intercooler in. It's still gonna stay in place and I can just put that bracket later when it arrives, but just so upsetting. I'm gonna grab the intercooler. And if you remember, this was a nightmare to pull out. Hopefully now it should be easier because the whole front end is gone, but let's see. Oh, that's good. Why are we catching on something? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you. Oh, I made a mistake. <sighs> I've been working on this car for six days straight. No, seven. Should have put the transmission cooler over this. Anyway, pull it out. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, good. The transmission cooler. <sighs> Let's do this again. <coughs> that sound. Oh no, it's stuck. Will you let go? Regroup. Oh, can't pull it out, it's stuck. <sighs> Absolutely impossible. I hate this intercooler so. Ah. Well, ain't that something? Ah. Well, now I just went completely through. Turns out I do need that bracket. What do we do now? Sit for the next four days and wait for the stupid bracket to come in? Just please. <clears throat> Last thing I remember, I took it out, out of here and I put it on the lift there. After that, like it never happened. I'm usually pretty good at organizing all of the parts and stuff, but two and a half hours later, found it. For whatever reason, I put it in the E31 thing over there where I store parts. Let's just erase this from my mind and continue. The bracket. So now I can do this again. Here we go again. We're still well off. Oh, I see. I don't know how this was designed in the first place. Nothing fits. I don't understand. Is that in now? It stepped onto the glove. No, the glove is part of the bracket. I think it's in for the most part. It's resting on the brackets and stuff and whatever. Brand new AC condenser. Slide it in. Little bit more. Again, the chief designer here was just phenomenal, dude. Now it's finally seated. Sorry for being a bit aggressive, but I hate this thing so much. I didn't route the transmission cooler lines correctly. This day needs to end ASAP. Transmission cooler back in place. There's like a million bolts all around, so I'm gonna start bolting everything back together. I'm gonna reconnect the AC lines. Brand new O-ring. Brand new coolant stuff, new expansion tank, coolant hoses, and all of these are original parts because none of this is available as OE. This small coolant hose that goes like that. New coolant hose with a brand new sensor going in. New pulley going in. Brand new belt. 
Why didn't I do this before I put the intercooler in? Oh, there we are. Okay, new coolant hose going in. The sensor. Supercharger bracket, need to clean it up first. And no, we cannot run this in the vapor blasting cabinet. Far too risky, too many places where media can get stuck. So we're gonna replace this pulley, although it's not too bad. I have a brand new one. That was under. Now we're gonna replace this O-ring here. Lubed up O-ring. I mean, you gotta give credit to Alpina. They engineered all of this within millimeters of each other. This is ridiculous. Torqued. Another brand new pulley going in. <clears throat> That's the supercharger bracket and tensioners installed. Now you're gonna do the oil supply line for the supercharger. Now you're gonna get the line in. Brand new oil pressure switch. And this is the thing that failed on Antonio when he initially bought the car. The car lost oil, oil pressure, skipped the timing for the first time. Then they retimed the engine and then later it skipped the timing again. Even though the shop replaced the sensor, we're gonna play it safe and replace it again. Brand new crush washers. Throttle body going back in with a brand new gasket. I also carefully clean it up with some Q-tips and throttle cleaner. No matter what you do, do not touch that flap, do not move it, otherwise you can ruin this throttle body because it's electronic and you don't wanna mess around with that. Now the piping. I don't even remember how any of this goes. <laughs> well, how do you do? Do, 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 do? I think it goes something like that. Again, we are talking about millimeter of clearance here. Where is clearance? All right, we'll tighten those clamps later. Let's go underneath and connect. The rest of the piping. Yep. Let's torque the torque converter bolt before I forget. That there is the axis hatch for the torque converter bolts. So I'm gonna rotate the engine slowly and torque all four of them. All right, so now I need to counter hold the engine. And that was the last one. There's a plug that goes here and here, but we'll do that later. Now I'm gonna install post-cat O2 sensors, and these are less important than the pre-cat ones, but these were cheap enough, so I'm replacing them as well. Give it a good twist. The other side didn't arrive yet, so I'm gonna do that later. Now I'm gonna start buttoning up connectors here and install the crankshaft position sensor. Uh, oil level sensor. There's a plastic box that comes in here and just makes all of this tidy, but I'm not gonna put it in now because I wanna make sure we don't have any leaks here. So we'll do that after. Now I'm gonna add power steering fluid, hydraulic fluid. This machine uses green hydraulic fluid, same as the 60 m 5 And uh, I buttoned up everything underneath. So let's see if we have any immediate leaks. The front end is up in the air, so I'm gonna turn the steering wheel. It went down a little bit, that's good. <laughs> that's good for now. And with that squirt of power steering fluid, we are going to park this episode here. More stuff remains to be done before we can attempt to start the car, namely service the supercharger, put back the engine oil cooler, prop shaft, exhaust, etc. And then we can answer the all important question that all of you want to know. What did I have for breakfast yesterday? As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you very soon.